Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, Cutler Bay's uh, budget workshop. Today's date is Monday, August 19th, 2024, 6 p.m. Um, if you'd please take the roll. Councilmember Duncan. Councilmember Ramirez. Councilmember Lord. Here. Vice Mayor Callahan. Here. Mayor Mayor Pot. Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. If you could all rise with me and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome to our second budget workshop, uh, one of three. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Ralph, if you want to lead us off and get into it. Okay. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, as you mentioned, tonight is our second budget workshop. Uh, there will be a, a third one, and then we will go into the mandated state hearings in uh, in September. So with that, if I can have access to the presentation. Mm -hmm. Mayor, council members, we'll have a quick formatting. We'll have a nice little introduction for a PowerPoint presentation. Then we're going to dive right into the, the budget which is online. Uh, and these are exact same worksheets that we work off of in, in the department head. So with that, let's see here. Oh. Okay. As we did during the first, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, I did the back. <laughs> Okay, my technical difficulty. So just to reiterate our mission statement, the town council will work to make Cutler Bay an excellent place to live, work, and play. Cutler Bay's government will be creative, responsive, and respectful, and providing innovative and cost-effective services to the community. That's our foundation. And obviously, we have our vision, which I'll, I'll spare uh, there to, for the council to read and the and residents here and the audience and, and residents at home as well. These are similar to what we did for the first budget visioning workshop. Financial sustainability and strategic goals, the fiscal viability of the town is primary concern of its elected officials, its residents, and its employees. Short and long-term financial stability is critically important to the ultimate realization of the town's vision. This, this service area has four components, fiscal responsibility, fiscal transparency, capital building programs, and growth management. I think that's very important to bring in the strategic master plan there. Uh, as I mentioned, Mayor and members of council, we had our first budget visioning session on July 31st. Tonight is August the 19th. We're having our budget now. We start showing some of the, the, the figures uh, and a lot of the work that's done by at the department level, and as well as our finance director, Robert Dario, who's uh, online as well. Uh, and then we have our third budget workshop on the 29th. I think I want to spend a second here because these are not required by the state. This is something that we do in Cutler Bay to provide you know, the uh, residents as well as the town council opportunity to collectively in the sunshine meeting, discuss collectively your, your thoughts and provide guidance to town staff. Hearings are state mandated. You'll see that coming out in trim notice shortly, September the 10th, first hearing and September the 24th. All meetings are at six o'clock at the town council chambers. One of the items that we do is make sure we have uh, a lot of, of uh, notifications. So, uh, our communications manager on July 24th put in the budget workshops and hearings through a e notification. We have over 4.8 thousand subscribers. We also have it as part of our Cutler Bay Community newspaper the week of August 20, August the 19th, our upcoming hearings. Then we also post it on our main town website calendar. And then we also have it displayed on our, our two electronic message boards, Crew and Boulevard 107 and Marlon Road and Oak Cutler Road. We also have, uh, we set the ceiling millage rate through, via resolution 2453. Millage rate ceiling is 3.006 per thousand assessed value. Our current rate is 2.8332. Resolution also created the, uh, set the budget hearing dates and times. As we mentioned before, September 10th, 6 p.m. First one, the second one, September 24th at 6 p.m. This graphic here, I just want to remind the council that um, Cutler Bay is still one of the lowest millage rates within the 34 municipalities. There you can see where we rank. I apologize, it's kind of sideways, but it's kind of the easiest way to read it. 
of 2.8332. Fund balance are reserves at $26.6 million as of our last audited. Proposed millage rate, even though we advertised uh, the 3.006 ceiling, um, the budget you'll see uh, that we have been working off and I'll make some explanation here later, will be at the existing rate of 2.8332. Again, this is just a, another graphic that, that uh, we updated in our presentation, talks about our town council, our town charters and, and directors. Org chart, town council, three charter officials, town clerk, town manager, town attorney's office. And then you have the graphic there for each individual departments and some of the services that are contracted out. So with that, let's begin. So the clerk's office can then go right into individual department budgets. Excuse me, Ralph. Just, yes, sir. Just quickly before we dive in, into the budget, your presentation said that the proposed budget was based on a 2.833 mil. The proposed budget before you tonight is going to be at a 3.006. I'm jumping to that right now where we're, we're going to let you know that going to the 2.8332, what that reductions will be. Okay. Let, let him get through his presentation. I think he'll probably answer most of the questions. Well, no, his the presentation said that the proposed budget was based on two point. I just need, just need to make sure that clarification. Okay. So, Yes, the proposed budget before you is using the ceiling rates because that's going to be the advertised ceiling rate for our first budget hearing. What we have done with staff is that we will develop the budget based on the 2.8332, as we mentioned during the, the budget visiting session. That's fine. I just, just want to make sure that that clarification no. is... And, and thank you. Record. Yes, and thank you for that, because, you know, in my world, we, we, we already know it's going to be reduced. And in fact, in our first presentation here... Um, it's going to talk about what that reduction will mean. And we'll be presenting, like right now, we're going to be presenting you a, a budget with a budget surplus of $3.2 million. By reducing the millage rate to the existing 2.8332, there will be a reduction of $640,000. It still provides you a surplus budget, but we're going to go into that now. But thank you for the clarification, because I know that sometimes we get caught up on my own um, technical items there. So, Maurice, if you get to the, okay. And, and then this section here, we're going to do a tag team. We're going to have uh, Robert Dario, our finance director, review the, the revenues, and then I'll do the individual departments here. So I know, Robert, I kind of stole maybe a lot of, a lot of your thunder there for the, for the millage rate, but uh, Robert, if you could kick us off with the revenues. Uh, sure. Good evening, Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, and Council Member Lloyd. <clears throat> Lord. Um, I just want to clarify one thing regarding the millage rate. As you can see here, it is based on the rate adopted by council in July, uh, 3.006 mils, and that's what's going to be advertised on the trim notice. When we go to the next workshop, August 29th, it's going to show the same thing. When we go to the first hearing, it's going to show the same thing, 3.0006. And at the first hearing, as you know, the first item of business for the council to discuss is the millage rate. At that point, then the millage uh, rate can be adjusted based on motion from the council. Uh, so if the council does want to go back to the 2.8332 mill rate, we would do that at first hearing. And as uh, Ralph mentioned, that would have an impact of about $641,000 on the ad valorem revenue number you're looking at on the screen now. So um, the um, the Avalon revenues are almost almost eleven point five million based on the growth in the um, property values. Um, and applying this rate and the ninety five percent budget factor uh, yielded eleven point four eleven million four hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars. <throat> uh, utility taxes uh, kind of like just taking an uh, a rough average of what we've been seeing over the past several years, uh, coming in around four million. Uh, last year was was a little bit of an anomaly. The actual of four million six ninety one because part of that money or part of that revenue number last year included 
items for fiscal year 22 that were received too late. So for counting standards prevented us from recording it in fiscal year 22 and was recorded in fiscal year 23. So 4 million is kind of like more of the average. So we, we, we settled on that number for, for this year's budget. The local government half cent sales tax, the communications tax and revenue sharing are all based on the state revenue estimates uh, and budgeting at a 95% budget factor. Um, electrical franchise fees, <clears throat> we're budgeting uh, roughly uh, almost $3 million, $2,950,000. Uh, just want to also point out, uh, I, I don't know if you recall or not, but from years back when we were part of the interlocal agreement for FBL franchise fees, um, through the interlocal agreement, uh, you know, our franchise fees were hovering around a million dollars a year. So this has been a, a, an ex extremely uh, good revenue source for the town. Uh, grateful that the council um, enabled us to enter into a separate agreement with FPL upon the termination of the county's interlocal agreement with FPL. And uh, it's, it's, really, it's really helped out the town's revenue streams. Uh, solid waste and licenses and re registrations are fairly consistent uh, every year. So we're, we're budgeting in line with previous years. Uh, obviously, there's fluctuation that can happen with those numbers. Um, you, know, you just don't know how many alarm violations you're going to have or how many business registrations you're going to have, businesses coming and going. The first local option gas tax is also a state transferred revenue number. They have not released that yet. So we're using a five hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar placeholder amount uh, for, for the for the budget. Uh, the next four items are building permits, zoning fees, code compliance fees, and other building and zoning. Uh, were all provided to me from from uh, Jared uh, based on uh, projects that he anticipates coming online in the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, parks fees. Um, last year was kind of, kind of an anomaly. Uh, it, maybe it's post, a post COVID uh, phenomenon, but um, you know, generally the parks fees have been in the 100 to, well, obviously last year was 211,000. Uh, so I, to be conservative, we're just going to budget 150,000, but there is, you know, year, year over year fluctuations in that, in that revenue source. Uh, judgments and fines, uh, we're budgeting 45,000. Uh, in recent years, they've been uh, lower than normal. Uh, again, this is a fluctuating number year over year based on the number of citations and such that are issued by the police department. So for 45,000 is a good number to use. It's kind of like a rough average over the past several years. Uh, miscellaneous revenues of 331,000, that comprises uh, several items in uh, school crossing guard uh, revenues that we get from the county, uh, lien search fees, mm -hmm. and lobbyist registrations from the clerk's office. Uh, it includes our revenue from the park cell tower that we rent out, the space that we rent out. And it also includes the uh, CITT administrative fee that we charge to the CITT fund. We get, we're allowed to charge uh, as an administrative fee 5% of the revenues of the CITT program. Uh, grants, the only thing we're budgeting for this fiscal year is the balance of the resiliency grant that um, started in the current fiscal year. Uh, it's anticipated that a, a small amount might transfer, uh, carry over to next year. So we're just, uh, we're just uh, budgeting for a portion of the $150,000 grant to carry over to next year. Uh, investment income is just uh, looking at our current um, investable cash balances and the current interest rate environment and coming up with an estimate of a, around $500,000. So total operating revenues uh, are estimated at just a little bit over $31 million. Uh, we're, we're bringing in from special revenues $200,000 uh, $200, of second local option gas taxes, which can be used uh, for capital type items such as our sidewalk repair and replacement program. So we're gonna be bringing that over in for the special revenue fund and expending it in the public works department for the sidewalk repair and replacement program. 
uh, balance is brought forward. This is the estimated uh, carryover from, from um, this fiscal year to the next. Uh, again, that's going to be a moving number, you know, as we, you know, more fine tune the projections for this year. Uh, issuance of leases, we, we, we don't have any this year. Proceeds from the issuance of debt, just want to point out that we know we anticipate issuing geo bonds this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, but given the ever changing environment and, and interest rates and uh, issuance costs, um, we felt we we felt it was rather than uh, with rather than estimate uh, come up with some kind of an estimate here in the ad original adopted budget. We thought it would probably be more prudent to wait until we actually issue the bonds and we have actual numbers, and then do a budget amendment at that point in the year uh, to reflect the actual. Uh, proceeds and the actual uh, debt issuance costs. So that's why, even though we know we're going to have an upcoming uh, bond issuance, uh, we're not budgeting for it in the original uh, adopted budget that we're going to pass in September, but rather we'll we'll deal with that with actual numbers at the time the bonds are actually issued. Um, then, as uh, Ralph mentioned, uh, the following expenditures are for the each of the departments, and we have. Uh, uh, separate spreadsheets on each of those detail uh, transfer out to special revenue two hundred fifty thousand. This is for what uh, Ralph is, refers to as the buffer land project, which I believe is the eight and a half acre parcel on Old Cutler and Southwest One Eighty Four. Um, we have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant for that project, which requires a two hundred fifty thousand dollar match. It was determined that ARPA funds were not. Um, eligible to use as a match uh, for that project. Uh, so we're, we're using uh, some of our, our general fund uh, grant match reserves uh, to cover that project. It'll be, it'll be transferred over to a special revenue fund. Uh, and then you'll see that uh, at the next budget workshop uh, and it'll be managed by the parks department. And then the uh, reserve balances, uh, basically, uh, to point out here, we're, we're, we're as, as of right now, the budget reflects 31.34 million of, of total fund balances, of which 27.3 million is going to be uh, set aside for contingencies and emergencies. And the current state of the budget um, reflect, is reflecting a surplus of 3,273,871. However, as, as we mentioned, once we, we uh, adjust the millage rate at first hearing, that budgeted surplus will be reduced by approximately 641,000, assuming no other changes. And that basically is the, the general fund summary uh, before we get into any uh, department uh, analysis. Is there any questions or about the revenue sources? Questions? No, there are none. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. I think another item I'd like to highlight there, and if you look back one screen, sorry, uh, uh, that our Avalorm, our Avalorm accounts for 37% of our total you know, revenue. As you see there on that one line there, the third line where it says 1148, right? And then you have the $31 million of revenue. So it only accounts for 37%. Because sometimes, you know, we get folks... Uh, asking, you know, what percent is Avalorum? So we're what that shows that we have a healthy budget that we're not heavily dependent on Avalorum, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's only thirty seven percent of that. So thank you, Rob, for the presentation. So now, Mayor, members of council, we're going to go into each department. And Rob, let me just real quick comment on the the uh, the Avalorum and remind the, the council that three years ago we came up with a plan. Uh, to go ahead and put us in a, in a solid position, and so far we've executed, it and we are in a much better position. If you look at the graph from, from Ralph's original presentation, and, and you can see during the uh, the years where the ad valorem tax was reduced, the town was in the red and basically didn't have enough money to pay their bills. It looks great politically. It sounds great, but it's not the best way to run a town, not if you really want to make have a, a positive impact on the people's lives. Number two, you have to take into consideration that we've seen – so housing values were, have increased for years and years. We've seen in the past where they have not. Uh, matter of fact, in, um, not too long ago, we saw where the entire housing market crashed. It was a very similar situation to where we have right now, where it was, it was 
So then it was looking very, very positive. And then it dropped like a rock, which also affects the uh, the ad valorem revenues coming in greatly. So, um, you know, I'm just thankful that this council has listened to the financial experts to talk about where we want to go. Um, and as long as we continue along this path, I'm very, very pleased with the results for the town so far as we're moving forward. So, and, and and I, if I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Robert. No, Rob. I just wanted to just add one thing. Um, it, it was very good that the council at the time uh, decided to move forward with this plan. It really has put us in a very good position. And I don't know if uh, Ralph has had time to mention it to you or not, but we're in the process right now of working with our financial advisor to try and get an upgrade to the town's credit rating based on our strong uh, financial strength. So mm -hmm. we're going to have initial discussions with Moody's uh, the first week of September. And hopefully by the time we go out, uh, to do the bond issuance that uh, we'll have a, a credit rating upgrade, which will save us a lot of money and in, in interest costs over 30 years. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for bringing that up. It's in my mind often, um, but it just makes so much sense. We're going to save so much more money by having a town in a good financial position than mm -hmm. as we were, you know, six, seven years ago, uh, we weren't in, the, in great position. So we are now, and uh, it's going to help us greatly. It's going to save us and our citizens a lot of money as we go forward with this bond issue. So, all right, I'll continue. Thank you, Robert. And then one, one more just historical fact. Uh, back in September 30th, 2020, we had 13.7 in our fund balance. The graphic I just showed you a couple of minutes ago shows us having a $26.6 million um, fund balance, you know, rainy day fund savings, or you want to call that, right? In preparation for us, it gives us those positions Two, for example, some things that we take for granted, unfortunately, like the purchase of uh, 87th Avenue property and Old Cutler Road, you know, that was an $8.5 million purchase. Uh, it gives us that ability to get favorable yeah. interest rates as well. That's why we're going through the Moody's as well. But I mean, again, just think about that from like, like your personal savings account. It went from 13.7 to 26.6, just in a matter of three fiscal years, you know, and that's what we're doing. And we know that what we're going to be leveraging our biggest project is going to be that you know legacy park project that, that we have right and and anything we try we're going to try to do is try to increase our moody's rating so the, so thank you robert for reminding us but i just want to make sure that i put that out for the public to understand that that's how much we've increased it and very prudent and not just robert and myself it's a team effort with the, with each of the of the members of, of our team that we have here our staff members so thank you mayor so now we're going to go into the part for this format, Mayor, members of council, uh, will provide you the first, you know, budget worksheet that kind of gives you a summary of the department. Uh, the one you have on the screen right now is Mayor and Council. The, the the total change here is since we're not going to have a, uh, a runoff election, you know that 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 department, you know, the expenditures were reduced. So this department here uh, for Mayor and and Council is going to be just oh wait the the election is in the town clerk's department right okay okay i'm thinking um so this one here we just had the reduction uh based on the decrease reflects the decrease of rates that council members participating in our some of our health plans so our council members have their own full-time plans uh so this overall reduction in this department is eighty seven hundred dollars so if there's any questions here if not we we could then move on to the next department okay town clerk there we go a little bit earlier there, right? So um, here is a, there's an increase and you'll see the steam throughout. I think uh, uh, one thing that's very important as, as town manager, I think the, the most, one of the most important assets, if not the most important asset we have is our, our town staff, you know, um, mayor members of council, I, I've said this, you know, uh, throughout our, my tenure here is that our success is going to eventually start coming at a price. What's that mean is some of my colleagues will then start looking at some of our staff members and team members. Right. So uh, my biggest thing is making sure that we, you know, protect the staff, provide them a, a good work environment. Uh, we do a, a, a pay plan, uh, um, 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 pay plan study every, you know, three years. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the set COLA per our resolution. So a lot of themes you're going to see here is just uh, um, employees, you know, with the with which are our biggest assets. That's what makes us the difference, you know, in in in, in Cutler Bay. So here we have a, an increase of fifty two thousand dollars in, in this department. You'll see that there. It's highlighted mostly, you know, in just in, in salaries there. Um, and if there's any, you know, questions here, let me know. 
No, same. The council. No. Okay. Next department, Mr. Clark. Okay. General government here. We're, um, if you can move up a little bit here, this is a lot of a lot of expenses here. Again, same theme, you know, salaries there. You have a net decrease. If you can move up a little bit there, uh, there, there we go. Net decrease primarily reflects the decrease of financial advisor services, but then also we have um, um, some decreases there from the environment, from the decrease in the in the communication consultant, but also we have an increase in our environmental lobbyist as well as we start going through that journey. And then also our technological consultant services that we have that we're finalizing our, our big um, um, software program that we have that's going to carry over. Um, also, we have, you know, the website hosting there. We have increased like design owners rep for the geo bond. Some of these items will be get reimbursed from the geo bond that we have there. So um, I don't know any, anything else, Robert, I could add to this department. If you could, Scroll back down, Mauricio. I just want to make sure if I missed any, because this, this is a, a large increase here. Robert, anything there? For the geo bond services, you can see there, for, it's a, a over a million dollars for the geo bond services there, because that we had to budget it there. But that's going to be something that we'll get reimbursed for once we issue the bonds. But we know that those are the costs that we're going to incur next fiscal year that, that we'll reimburse ourselves from the issuance of the bond. So that's why you see that big, large increase there. And then also uh, item E as an earnest there is an increase to our property insurance, just like everyone else, our property insurance has gone up. Uh, both myself and Robert have, have gone through and exhausted our efforts to try to reduce, but at the same time, not expose ourselves too much for a lot of liability. We do have a lot of more equipment out there, as I think it was, uh, uh, I think it was Vice Mayor said it eloquently during our budget vision is that we've always increased our amenities in our parks. As that increases, now we obviously we're increasing some of the uh, uh, outdoor fitness equipment that we have. You know, expanding playgrounds, et cetera. So, so you see that that's that starts catching up with us with our insurance carrier. So, if there's any questions for general government, okay. Next, okay, we have the the, the finance department. Um, as you know, mayor members of council, you know we we're very proud of saying that we only have you know uh, 37 full time employees. But at the same time, that means we have a lot of vendors, right? So what's that mean? I mean, if you, you've seen our operation in the finance department, you know, you know, Robert, Mildred, and Norma do a great job there. This budget here, the biggest highlight is that we're going to bring in a part-time, no more than 20 hours per week uh, employee to help and serve as a, uh, a rotation person because it, it, literally our finance department is, is so lean that one person's out. It's like, okay, who's doing payroll? I mean, that's, we're so lean there. So, so this budget does uh, reflect a, a part-time position, not to exceed twenty hours per week uh, for this for this department here, and and that's what most of that um, increase is there for. Okay. No questions. Okay. Next one. Okay. Town attorney's office. Uh, as as you know, we contract out to the law firm West Road to help them. Um, and um, it's basically a, a flat service here. And town attorney here, Roger Pose, here representing the town count attorney. If there's any questions, okay, great, thank you. Okay, well, if you have any, Ralph, you can just keep going. And if okay, you, all right, just along the way. All right, just uh, not a problem. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Community development department, as we discussed during our budget visiting process, we're going to bring in a what we call a uh, a facilitator. You know, building permit manager, as we call it, uh, there will be some cost savings there because we contract out that service now. But that person will be in house uh, and will oversee. And instead of contracting out for three front desk employees, we're only going to be contracting out for two because we're bringing in per one person in house. So there will be some uh, cost savings there, as as reflected on on this budget. But at least we could, we could have a one stop shop facilitator there that is our own town employee. No reflection on our current provider, but I think it was important for us to have that individual there that monitors on a daily basis um, the, the front desk clerks and making sure that everybody's getting the accurate information. And more importantly, having that one-on-one -on -one service with the residents that, that come in and get an owner builder permit that sometimes can be complicated for someone trying to do that on themselves. So this department reflects that there, as well as uh, obviously our other contractual services there. You see the big ticket item because that is, uh, as we get receive the permits, we do have uh, that those inspectors um, on an hourly basis 
I'd like to thank, you know, Jared and, and Santiago Gonzalez, Santi, because we've actually implemented a, a time clock just like regular employees. So the inspector comes in for a certain discipline, they time in and time back out. So we've seen a reduction in, in, in our invoices with that, and that hopefully reflects <laughs> even more of a cost saving than you see here presented in the budget. Okay, next department. Okay. Public Works Department. Um, Basically, it's a, a, um, a less than uh, the current year. Uh, there, a lot of uh, the offset is that we charge a, some 30% uh, of the salaries um, to the stormwater utility fund uh, as it reflected on their individual job duties there. And this is all the uh, right-of-way services that, that we maintain throughout and, uh, and, and the payroll for that department. And that's an overall reduction of 41000 Police department, as we contract out with Miami County Police Department, this is one of our big ticket items. Uh, the cost did go up over $597,000, and that's attributed to uh, the total increases that, that were negotiated through the union. We know that there's going to be a, a new sheriff um, that's going to be elected. And um, speaking to my fellow colleagues, uh, other two contracted cities in Miami Lakes and the village of Palmetto Bay, uh, they saw the similar increases because of the bargaining unit increases in, in, their, in, the, in the cost. So, but that's something there that we're also looking at different ways, uh, some cost cutting initiatives that we have with our, our police major. So hopefully that's something that's gonna get a little bit, a little bit better, but this is our, our biggest vendor that we have, public safety. Parks and Recreation, uh, a lot of the items there is that you'll see that this uh, department is, if you could go down a little bit more, sorry. Yep, this department has has increased $169,000, but a lot of it is going to be for the increase in level of services for our, our landscaping services that we have. We want to make sure that we have more cycle cuts, more uh, individual um, individuals working at the say after after you know sporting events we have you know like like uh, our contractor there more often to simple things like like in between baseball games of, of breaking the play for example you know those kind of things that we want to make sure that we have but also we know that we're we're trying to start winding down some of our active adult services that we used to have grants for over a hundred thousand but you'll see there that we actually budgeted um over let me see if go up a little bit Sorry, up, up, down, down, sorry. Right there. Whoop, whoop. So we, we increased uh, the, uh, the budget to reflect some of the uh, additional services for active adult programs, but we're also, as uh, we're increasing our budget for reclaim one of the baseball fields on Lakes by the Bay. We did a couple fields in the last couple of years. This will be the third one here. Uh, also reflects a, a, a fence along our Saga Bay, Saga Lake Park replacement fence, but more importantly, fifty thousand dollars for uh, the the same type of fencing at our newly acquired property, Old Color Road and Eighty Seventh Avenue property there as well. Because uh, right now it's just kind of like open field, and some folks it's like you know parking all over it. Uh, so sometimes we you know have to sit there and shoo away folks, and then and then also the the walking path. Um, and and the new pavilion at Blue Heron Park, that's going to be offset because that park's that right closed, and that's going to be part of the renovation project for that for that pro property as well. Next department. That's it. Oh, okay. So if we can, so that completes the the for each department. But I think Mayor Moore, members council. Um, even though we didn't dive into the worksheets, I want to make sure and I guess that this. Uh, what you see on the screen here is what's part of the agenda. It's uh, attachment B to to my memo. And with that, I'd like to go back to a brief closing from the PowerPoint. If we can, Maurice, if you could bring it up on the screen. Okay, so our third budget workshop, as I mentioned, the members of the council will be scheduled for Thursday, August the 28th. This is just a sample. That's when we start diving into what we call the special revenue funds. Um, 
our special projects, a lot of the ARPA projects and different categories that we have for the CITT fund, the lighting fund, children's trust, obviously the stormwater utility fund as well. We know that also the Miami-Dade County property appraiser will, will be sending out the Truth and Miller's notice. So I just want to give residents a quick preview. Folio number, our Cutler Bay folio number is number 36. We also will have uh, the stormwater utility fee, the unified billing method. We uh, It's going to be $90 per year, which is $7.50 per month. A hearing date set for that is going to be September the 10th, which is our first budget hearing date. Um, we mailed out over 14,000 notices to residents the week of August the, 20, the 12th. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for the uh, the video, um, providing just uh, uh, an explanation of what the fees are. We've actually had, uh, now I think it's most recent, over 5,000 views for that, explain that. And then we also have a part of the state state statute is advertising the the notice requirements and the hearing dates at uh, on it's going to be published in Miami Herald on August twenty first. Something new. This is a sample you'll see here in Cutler Bay when the residents get the trim notice. It'll have the September tenth meeting. This was just last year's sample, but more importantly, this year there'll be a fee there, it's Cutler Bay stormwater utility fee, and those will be ninety dollars per year. And then quickly, just uh, as we, I do a recurring, just to keep track of the ARPA, we received $21 million, $10 million for general services. I explained last time that we've used up 2.2 million of it. We know we're gonna have some reserved for our software program and the remainder will go into the, the, the legacy park pool aspect of it. The other remaining 11 million, these are all the different projects that we have. Something similar, the map is similar to folks uh, we showed last time. All the different sub basins that are being used for 11 million. Roadway improvement projects, these are non opera related. So you can see a lot, a lot of different roadway projects that were either currently in the design, construction phase, or the, in the planning phase. And I think another item here just to mention is that uh, you can see the funding source, American Rescue Plan, FDOT and LAP grants, Miami-Dade County Joint Participation Agreement. We just had our Friends of Roadway uh, groundbreaking there. Uh, Towns People's Transportation Plan and Towns Utility Fund. Nowhere there you see abnormal in taxes. So, and that's something that that is a tribute to everyone involved. And if there's any questions, we're available. Again, this is the council workshop, so. I do note uh, so the five thousand views on the uh, video about the notice. First of all, thank you for you know bringing it out there, letting folks know it's it's not a new tax. It was just transferring the tax from what used to be charged, different method, and saving the town's four percent. So, Vice Mayor, thank you for putting that video together. I I noticed that over four thousand of those hits came from the address of MP Callahan at uh, <laughs> so and, and boy, are my fingers tired. Yeah, so so um. Questions, comments from the council. Vice Mayor Callahan, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, um, a, a question and then uh, just a, a general comment. Um, the first question is, in the general government uh, line on the geo bond services, the initial outlay of $1 million, you had um, you had said that that would be repaid once the, gen once the bonds are issued. Correct. Okay. Correct. It'll so, be a reimbursable, right? Reimbursable. So the <clears throat> question is it, based on a 2.8 millage rate and a surplus of uh, 1.6, if we got repaid that, that million dollars and that, that would increase that surplus. Yes, because we will, it, the, the geo bond will bring back to general fund. It'll be a transfer in and transfer out. Right. So, I mean, we we could be looking at a three point six million dollar reserve, right? Because we'd be getting that million dollars back. Correct, right. and and if our track record's proven us uh, right, is like for example, last year we had a a budget surplus of like one hundred seventy thousand dollars, and we actually ended up with three million. So you're absolutely right. It'll 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 go to our favor. If that makes sense. So and I I just want to make a quick comment on a line item, right? Uh, because. We get a lot of pushback from this every year as the budget's being released and reviewed by our residents. And that's where it comes to the judgment and fines. Folks figure that we put a budgetary item in there, uh, and therefore it's an objective for us to find people to get to that. And that's farthest from the truth. 
be quite honest, we would love for that to be zero, right? We would absolutely love for that to be zero in our uh, in our revenue source. But unfortunately, not everybody plays by the rules. So that's what keeps our code enforcement officers busy. But you know, that's just a reflection of past history on violations. So, you know, I'm just letting our residents know if everybody played by the rules, we'd be more than happy to keep that line item at zero. But it's not an objective of ours to find people to hit that revenue number. And thank you, Vice Mayor, for that statement, because we we get the same comment all the time. And and just another fun fact, we have over 750 active cases. Um and we, the best thing we like to do is try to resolve the matter before we even get to a special master, right? Um, it doesn't do us any good to have someone with a with a daily reoccurring fine of two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the, in the you know, almost a you know six figured you know fi figure uh, fines. I'd rather have that house come into compliance, mm -hmm. or have the bank foreclose, uh, bring in the company to clean it up put a big for sale sign on it and bring another new family to Cutler Bay. I mean, we'd rather have that than $250,000, you know, for a daily fine. So you're absolutely right, Vice Mayor. But uh, again, that's a tribute to our, our code compliance. In fact, we have an internal saying that code compliance appreciated the day of closing. When you're closing, your property value is that high because code compliance did something, right? Because it is a tough job telling everybody, uh, th those individuals that are in violation, that they're doing something that they're not allowed to. So, but thank you for the, for the words, Vice Mayor. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> We're off again, uh, and, and Robert, thank you for the presentation. Um, looking good as we go. Um, there's, I think I have a conflict for the next budget hearing, um, just so you know. So, Vice Mayor, you may be the one charged for that one. But I'll talk to you beforehand if there are any questions or comments that I have. Sure, not a problem. In fact, uh, uh, Councilwoman Duncan reached out to me and Councilwoman Ramirez as well that they won't be able to make it tonight, but they'll, they'll watch the recording and they also have, we call it the book that we were reading from. And this is the same uh, items that are posted on the town website as well. And our communications manager will will post this uh, tomorrow with the video. If there's any questions throughout, you, uh, residents will have to wait to the next budget workshop. Right. Because and I'll also like to point out that, you know, these workshops are primarily for the the, the public to because we can talk to Ralph on our own anytime and give the input and and, and uh, have our questions or concerns addressed then um so again I'm sure councilman uh, Ramirez and councilman Duncan have talked to you as well yes. as I have and everybody else so, so <clears throat> all right any other questions or comments no all right this meeting is adjourned thank you very much <clears throat>